We magnify your holy name for granting us this wonderful opportunity to consolidate this brilliant reconciliation report at this auspicious gathering. Almighty Allah, it is by your grace and mercy that you granted the facilitators of the reconciliation process wisdom, knowledge, and above all, divine wisdom, divine guidance to facilitate, to facilitate this wonderful achievement today. Almighty Allah, sanctify and expel all demonic and satanic forces in and around this vital occasion and grant all citizens of this great nation a tranquil atmosphere to live in peace and harmony. Almighty Allah, you have said in Quran chapter 49 verse 9, O ye who believe, if two parties of the believers fall out and fight each other, make peace between them. And said again in the same verse, make peace between them with equity and act justly. For Allah loves those who do just, justice. Almighty Allah, shower your abundant blessings on the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu, his vice, and all those who have worked assiduously in diverse ways for the realization of these great achievements. Almighty Allah, strengthen us in our faith in you to cherish understanding of one another and peaceful coexistence in our dear country, Ghana. O oh, Allah, bless Ghana and make our affairs good now and always. Allahumma inna nashkuruka kathiran bi ishtima inna hadha liyum al -azim. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an tanzila sakina wa salama ta'alayna. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal tuka wal afafa wal gina. Allahumma musarrifu al kulub sarrifu kulubina jami'an ala huda wa ta'atika. Allahumma la taj'al musibatana fi dinina wa la taj'al dunya akbar hammina wa la mablaga ilmana. Wala to salit alayna man la yarhamuna. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ama yasifun. Wassalamun ala al musaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Amen. Thank you. Mr. President, we're gathered here this afternoon for the Committee of Eminent Chiefs to present to you and to the nation a roadmap for peace in Dagwan. The Dagwan Challenge has existed for decades, but in the last 15 years has been of a peculiar nature. Various heads of state have, in the name of the government of Ghana, supported the peace efforts. And since your assumption of office, you have done so and provided your commitment as well. This morning, we have been informed that there's a roadmap to peace which will be announced here today. I want to very quickly introduce some of the dignitaries who are here with us this morning, and then would invite the chair of the Committee of Eminent Chiefs to present this roadmap. First, may I ask, and if I call on you, please um, give us a wave or rise where you are so that we can acknowledge you. May I ask uh, us to acknowledge the chairman of the National Peace Council who is here with us um, today. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. We're happy to have with us imams from the Dagbon traditional area who are here with us, if they can also rise for us to acknowledge them. We're happy to have with us this afternoon the leader of the Dagbon Forum, who is with us as well. Also the leader of the Dagbon Youth Association here with us as well. They're here with their entire leadership. We have members of the Andani Royal Family here, including the Vona, the Warvi Na, the Lamashe Na, the Zhang Balung Regent, the Tibung Regent, and the Berimandana. We also have with us, Mr. President, members of the Abudu Royal Family, including the Nantong Regent Na Sulesaka. The Tolon Regent, Major Retired Abubakar Sulemana, the Mion Regent, Alassan Abudu Ziblim, the Kole Regent, Mahama Mahama, and the DLE Regent, Abukar Abdullahi, as well. Also with us this afternoon are prominent citizens of the Dagbon traditional area, including Mr. Adam Kalim. Please rise and let's acknowledge you. We also have with us Dr. Wayo Saini, who is here with us as well, and lawyer Ibrahim Mahama, 
Let's acknowledge you as well. <laughs> Mr. President, the Committee of Eminent Chiefs made up of the Yagbongura Tuntumba Borisa Suleimana Jakwa the first, who is here with us this afternoon. <laughs> the Nairi Bohogu Abdullahi Mahami Sheriga, who is here with us this afternoon. <laughs> and the Asante Hine Otun Fosei Tutu the second, who is also here with us this afternoon. <laughs> Mr. President, at this juncture, I would like to invite the chair of the Committee of Eminent Chiefs, the Asante Hine Otun Fosei Tutu, to make a statement. Your Excellency, Mr. President, it's been a journey for the past uh, 16 years. Jump. The predicament that happened in Gabon, Jump. leading to the death of Yana, brought untold security hardship and everything to Ghana. Jump. And so we were charged by President Kufo then to find a customary and traditional way of bringing Dabon to normalcy. Sure. At that time, there was also the issue about the death of Yana, whether it was a criminal aspect, whether the circumstances that he died was also there. But then a line was drawn between the criminal aspect and the traditional aspect. Our duty was to find the traditional and customary way of bringing Dabon to normalcy. And that's sure. what we started doing in 2002, March. To 2006, we drew a roadmap where we decided that the regent of Dabon should be the, he was the son of the incumbent Yana who died, should take precedence over the regent of uh, uh, Nama Hamadou, even though he died earlier. And then in the roadmap, we said that taking cognizance of the decision of the Supreme Court to the effect that the late Yana Muhammadu should be regarded as a former Yana and that his sons be regarded as sons of Yana and that they do qualify to contest the gate schemes of Mion, Karaga, and Sabligu, which decision the eminent kings and all the parties accept. The Supreme Court decided further that only occupants of the schemes of Mion, Karaga, and Sabligu can aspire to and occupy the Namship. The report of the Reconciliation Committee established to give effect to the, to the Supreme Court judgment and the agreements and undertakings agreed to by all the parties who were signatories to the agreement. The fact that Nama Mohamedou died when he was no longer in office as Yana, the unfortunate incidents of March 2002 leading to the death of Naya Yakubu Andani and some of his followers and the need to accord in burial in accordance with Dabon custom and tradition the need for equity, justice, and fairness in finding a solution to the Dabon conflict, whereof the Eminent Kings Committee, committee with a full and active participation and concurrence of both families, hereby decides as follows, that the installation of the regent of Yana Yakubu Andani takes precedence over the installation of Nama Hamadou Abdullah's regent since Naya Yakubu died in office, and Dabon custom did not contemplate a situation where there would be two sitting Yanas or regents at the same time. A council of the elders comprising three representatives each from the Andani and Abudu families shall be constituted immediately to act in concert with the Kugana and the regent of Naya Kubu Andani to handle all traditional arrangements from the date of burial of Naya Kubu Andani, performance of funeral rites of both late Yanas to the installation of a new Yana. So, the council of the elders shall comprise the following. So we had the list at that time. Then the barrier of Naya Yakubu should take place on 10th of April with the consultation and active participation of the Council of Elders and his regent appointed shortly thereafter in accordance with Dabon customs and traditions. The Kugana is enjoined to act as father of all, to be impartial and to ensure the full participation of the Abudu family in all matters relating to the barrier of Naya Yakubu and Dani and the management of the Dabon state. 
the powers of the region shall be limited because of the peculiar circumstances in Dabon today. In this context, the region shall not have powers to appoint any chiefs or alienate any lands or other resources belonging to the Dabon state. Without prejudice to clause E above, the regent with the concurrence of the Kugana and the Council of Elders shall appoint chiefs to vacant skins whose participation will be crucial to the performance of the funeral rites of Na Muhammadu and Na Yakubu and Dani, and to assign the regent of Na Muhammadu to a skin after the performance of the funeral of his father. So, the burial of Na Yakubu and Dani shall be performed in the royal Muslim. All other purposes connected to this burial shall be performed at the temporary palace. There can only be one palace in Dabon Kingdom. The temporary palace was constructed following the unfortunate incidents of 202. In this connection, the old Bewa Palace shall remain free of occupation of any activity until a date is set for the performance of the funeral rites of Na Muhammadu Abdullah. No. After the burial of Na Yaqubu and Dani, both sides shall meet again with the Committee of Eminent Kings to work out a program for the funeral rites of Na Muhammadu. So then in witness thereof, they signed. So that was the stage that we came to in 2006. And about 12 years now, we've met severally. My brothers have come. The old men have been shuttling in between Kumasi and uh, Nalerigu and uh, Gonja, coming down with my sons here, both on the left and right, <coughs> trying to find a solution to the way for the roadmap then. The issue of contention was the funeral of Na Muhammadu. So, first, it will, even though the Supreme Court has said that he must be recognized as a former Yana, the issue was about whether his funeral can be performed in the palace. The Abudus contended that yes, because the Supreme Court said that he must be recognized, he deserves the full recognition of a Yana. The Andanis then started by saying that no, because he died as a former Yana, even though the Supreme Court says that we should recognize him, his funeral, must be performed at where he died. So, now then, the contention then from the Abudus was that once he has been buried at the Katundu, all that is where they have to perform the rites, and so they cannot be stopped from doing that. It was to and fro, and then the arguments for and against, till such time that we came to a conclusion that yes, being that the Supreme Court said, even though there has been an Olenu commission that said that his enskinment and, and all that was null and void, the Supreme Court, being the highest court of the land, said that notwithstanding that, notwithstanding how he ceased to be Yana, he must be recognized as a former Yana so that his children also would be recognized as such. So with that, we came to the conclusion that Na Muhammadu's funeral must be performed as a Yana, and therefore the customary rights must all be in accordance with a former Yana. So, and that is where we came. And then after that, the funeral of Naya Kubu and Dani would also be performed and accorded all the dignity and respect. Then we came to who has to perform the funeral. So, the contention was that it, even some of them went to court where this, the Abudus had sent it to court to contest that the Kampukuyana was obstructing and he has to initiate. But then by their custom, it's the elders of the Abudu and the Andani who have to initiate the funeral. So in our conclusion, we said to them that the elders of the Abudu must then, through the customary right, they have to inform the Kugana about the performance, go through that, and then initiate, start with the funeral of Na Muhammadu. So when that finishes, then the uh, Andanis also would also, the elders would also inform the Kugana and then also perform the funeral of Na Yakubu Andani. So, but before we get to the details, Your Excellency, I just want to apprise you with what exactly the situation in Dabon and what is, uh, what is giving cause to this problem. In as far back as 1959, LI-59 was established by Kwame President Nkrumah at that time because there was still this confusion about uh, two Yanas having succeeded twice at the Abu Dhabi, and therefore LI-59 was that the, when it finishes, the Andinists also should succeed twice. Unfortunately, then there was a coup, Kwame Nkrumah was ousted, and then now Abdullah Muhammadu again was installed as Yana in 1968, 69, and that brought another confusion there, where there was a petition to Dr. Buzia. And then it went to Nene Azumate Kole Commission. And then it ruled that the enskinment was done by the elders of Dabon, and therefore it should be uh, 
sustained. So then he carried on to be the Yana then. Then there was a coup, then General uh, uh, Kutue Champo comes, there's another petition, and he sets up the Olenu Commission. The Olenu Commission then goes through to say that the escapement of Nam Muhammadu Abdullah was null and void because it didn't go through the processes that is customary. Then there was a petition to the President Rawlins' time, and it went to the Supreme Court. Then the Supreme Court then affirmed that no, notwithstanding that, notwithstanding the findings of Olenu Commission, being it that the scheme is not known in the Davon custom, no. not, notwithstanding how he sees to be Yana, he must be recognized as a former Yana. And that is how come that now Muhammad Abdullah still then is accepted now as a former Yana, and therefore his funeral must be performed. So, and whilst we're going through these things, there were issues about, when well, even the roadmap, we realized that we, we didn't go by the roadmap because the Council of Elders that was supposed to be for, uh, formed didn't even, uh, they didn't, couldn't even form that because the Kugana and the elders couldn't meet. And so the meeting where they should advise the, uh, the regent was not uh, in place. And therefore, the regent had the opportunity to enskin without the cooperation of all the elders. But if we were to go through that, we would have said that most of the decisions that the region had done was also not in consonance with the custom. But being it that the scheme is not known, we had to accept that once he's done that and the people have been skin, we accepted that they have been duly and skinned as uh, chiefs of uh, double. So, and therefore, we had to uh, look, at, or look at it in that way that we didn't want to complicate the issues with uh, coming back to the skin someone and creating another problem for us. So, Almost all the people, all the people who are skinned are all recognized now as legally unskinned and they're holding those customary titles. It got to a point where the Abudus also were apprehensive because because the Kugana, the, the, the region was there, they're also not prepared to perform any funeral because they weren't sure whether they would be appointed to certain positions which belong to Abudus. So most of the regions in the Abudu side didn't actually perform their funerals waiting till when they thought they would also have a good environment which would be suitable to them to be able to perform their, their father's funeral so that they could move on. And therefore, we still have regions, most of the regions in, uh, in the Abudu side also now waiting. The bone of contention has been whether regions can play a part in the funeral of Na Yana. So, and that also has come up. In fact, after our meeting, there were issues raised by the representatives of the Regent of Dabon, and then the, 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 the Kugana. I don't know where they were. Are the representatives of Kugana here? Because I asked for them to come. So that means that you didn't get them? Or they refused to come? They said they are sick. All right. He said he was sick, so he was not coming. Okay. Because. Uh, after this, we will have to take very serious decisions on those people because I, I cannot countenance anyone so, holding the Dabon to ransom or this country to ransom because of their, so, so, because, because of their personal issues. Dabon is at peace. All the elders here are here, they are here. And those are the elders who matter in Dabon. The regent was not invested to be a Yana. He was supposed to be a regent of Dabon for a period so that we, the processes for the funeral of Na Muhammadu and Na Yaqubu could go on, and then we, we have a Yana. So, and then for him to have taken that position and entrenched, because this committee invited him a couple of times to come to meet us, so that we could discuss his concerns, so, and that we could factor that into our decisions that we could do. The issue about their father having died, yes, we all are very sorry about that. I don't think we wish that for anybody. So we very much appreciate that their father and their, their brothers and all those things have uh, they lost their parent, their breadwinner, and all those things. But no. that is a criminal aspect, if that is so. But then, to hold that to ransom so that that one cannot carry on, I would die and our St. Mine will continue. No. And therefore, I cannot see why my brother had died. If, we, if there's any evidence at all that I've told them all, if anybody has evidence, to the effect who killed Diana. 
have asked that they should present the report to us. We would tell the president, the security agencies would investigate and prosecute. We've so, gone through that with the Waku Commission and all that. And so I still said to them that it's open for them to come. Tell us if you have any evidence at all as to why, who killed Diana. We are prepared to prosecute. And I gave them an example of the Jews and all that. What happened? 40 years now, people are still being prosecuted. So, and so we've gone through all that. You got a lawyer to come to see me, the Campo Priana, about issues in court. I said to them, that is not binding on, the, on us. But yet, I'll bear with them. Got the lawyer to come. I said, what is the issue? The issue was that the Abudus have taken them to court and got a judgment to the no. fact that the Campo Priana has to initiate the funeral. And he was contesting that. I said, fine. Get the Campo Priana to come. And then we, we listened to the concerns. We factor that in the settlement. Severally, the lawyer came to see us, and then it got to a point where the lawyer also was not even responding to calls from my office. And no. the Campo Kriana too, forgotten that the, it is the same committee that appointed him, that made him the regent of Dabon. No. You cannot benefit from the committee's decisions and still refuse not to appear before the committee. No. That cannot be allowed, Mr. President. And therefore, the committee then came to the decision after 12 years of deliberation meeting all, there were times that the Abudus accused the committee and me of not wanting to, to listen to them. There was a time the Andanis also accused the, me of not listening to them. But I no. told them I'm a father to all of them and I need to be fair. The Yabumra and the Nairi are fathers to them. We don't benefit in any way apart. I have a relation with Dabon from Nagarba and they know that he married an Asante princess and then that is how come they are my children. No. And therefore, they, they know that I seek to benefit from peace in Dabon, not from benefiting, not supporting any one family, because they are all my children. No. Nairi's children are them, the Yabumras, are, they, are, they are their fathers. But what we needed to do was to go by the customs and traditions to make sure that we have peace. And the truth was the only thing that we sought for, which was customs and traditions. And therefore, to allow the, the Kampukriana and his brothers to hold up on to ransom, that is not accepted. We cannot do because all of them here are prepared now to move on to have the funerals of Nama Muhammad Nai Yakubu performed and then a new Yana. So they can also go up and then hold senior positions in Dabon. And therefore, Mr. President, we've come here to inform you. This decision, took, this committee took a decision no. and said that the funeral of Nai Yakubu and Nama Muhammad Abdullah should be performed from the 14th of December to the 28th of December this year. No. They have a one week respite, and the next will be from the 4th to the, ninth, another two, four, four to the 19th or 18th of January. Then the Andanius would also perform. On that very day, the last day, the Friday, there are four recognized elders who have to sit in, uh, in seclusion, and then they would have to work, do their or oracles to choose a new Yana. And that starts from the very Friday that the funeral of Naya Kubu and Dani finishes. So we hopefully believe so that after the 18th, the oracles will start and God willing, within the few days, we shall have a new Yana. No. And that's what I've come to present. <laughs> there are various issues that we would, that is not to affect this one, but I still would have to engage my, my sons again in terms of modalities for the funeral. I still have to engage the Kugana because I, I wanted to let him know that he should act as a father to both sides. No. And therefore, he also benefited from the regent's position because it was the regent who appointed him as Kugana. And therefore, he's also benefited from this committee. And so if he takes any intransigence position, I'm afraid the committee would have to deal with that. No. And therefore, I need to assure you that this committee is presenting this to you, but we haven't finished till we get a new Yana. And no. so we shall still engage them, the processes for the new Yana till we get a new Yana. And hopefully, we'll come back here to present the new Yana to you, Mr. President. No. So, but for now, we want to thank you before we started from President Kufour, and then we went through late Pre Professor Mills, and then we went through uh, President Mahama, and then now you sit in the chair, and I stand before you here to present Dabon as we've gone to, 
uh, where we have reached no. out. And therefore, maybe you are the luckiest president. Because I <laughs> and and I, I also know, but let me put it on record that at no time has any president or party or political party brought no. any influence at all on this committee. None of them. You have not brought any pressure on us to resolve this. President Kofo didn't do that. President Mills didn't do that. And I didn't allow, I wouldn't allow, sure, they know I would never allow anyone to bring pressure on me to settle issues on uh, whether uh, the president sure. likes this way or not. That no one can force me to do it. So we've come to this conclusion based on the customary and traditional, uh, my, traditional uh, customs and traditions of Dabon. And no. we want to assure you that we'll still we'll continue through that till we get a new Yana. So the impression that the MPP is now here and they're in a hurry to do, uh, perform the funeral of Na Muhammadu, no, that's not the issue. So no. the president sitting there has not brought any pressure on me to resolve that. No. And I've gone through NDC and MPP governments and none no. of them brought any pressure on me. We've resolved this through the customs and traditions and we are here to present that to you, Mr. President. So thank no. you very much. No. We say thank you to the Committee of Eminent Chiefs led by the Chair Dasante Hene Otumfose to the second. Shortly, the President would make some remarks to us, but I also want to acknowledge the members of the Council of State who are here with us this afternoon. Let's give them a round of applause. We are happy to have with us Ministers of State of the Republic who are here with us this afternoon. Let's acknowledge them as well. We are also happy to have with us the leadership of parliament made up of members from both the majority and the minority sides. Let's acknowledge them as well with a round of applause. Please rise and let's acknowledge you. Thank you. We are happy to have with us members of parliament as well and representatives of the National House of Chiefs who are also here as well. Let's acknowledge all of them with a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic. Revered clergy, respected members of the Committee of Eminent Chiefs, representatives of the Royal Abdani and Abudu Gates, chairperson and members of the Council of State, Chief of Staff, the officials of the Presidency, Senior Minister, Northern Regional Minister, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State, the First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, the Deputy Majority Leader, and the Deputy Minority Chief Whip of Parliament, the Chief of Air Staff, representing the Chief of Defence Staff, Deputy Inspector General of Police, representing the Inspector General of Police, Service Chiefs, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Chief Executives of the Northern Region, distinguished invited guests, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first of all welcome all of you particularly the distinguished members of the Committee of Eminent Chiefs and the representatives of the Royal Andani and Abudu Gates to the seat of the presidency of our nation, Jubilee House. Otufo Akwaba. Nairi Yajari. Yabongura Asankaba. And he mariba to the Abudu and Andani representative. We give praise to Almighty God for today. Indeed, even though I cannot tell what will happen tomorrow, I have no doubt that this occasion will rank as one of the most memorable days of my presidency. I'm hopeful that the journey to attain sustainable and lasting peace in Gabon which began several decades ago, is coming to an end. I believe that the wisdom of the second president of the Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Ajikun Kufo, in setting up this committee of eminent chiefs to resolve the, the, the Dagbon crisis has been vindicated. 
The conflict in Dagbon has dragged on for so long that many Ghanaians, including some sons and daughters of Dagbon, have become skeptical about the ability to resolve the matter and secure enduring peace in Dagbon. I was never one of the skeptics. I have an unshakable faith in the capacity of the Ghanaian people to resolve their own problems. And that faith has paid off. The roadmap presented by the chairperson of the Committee of Eminent Chiefs, Nana Santene, Otunfo Setu II, is an important milestone in the decades old search for permanent solution to the Dagbon problem. The people of Dagbon are to be warmly congratulated for this achievement. To the three eminent chiefs, Santehene, Utufo Setu II, Nayiri, Na Buhugu Abdullah Mahami Sheriga, and Yabonura, Tutumba Boresa, Sulemana Jakpa, who have worked for so long to achieve this, I salute you for your tenacity and resilience. I commend you for not giving up on the Dagbon people even when at times the situation seemed hopeless. I applaud you for your high sense of statesmanship and patriotism in helping to find a satisfactory outcome to this seemingly intractable conflict. It is also appropriate that we on this occasion acknowledge with gratitude the roles played by the late kings of Mamprugu and Gunja, Na Gamni Muhammadu Abdullahi, Yabongura, Bawa, Abu Dudushi, respectively, who began the process with the two force to two the second, but who were not fortunate to see this day. May their souls rest and abide in the bosom of the Almighty until the last day of the resurrection, when we shall all meet again. Eminent Chiefs, ladies and gentlemen, in the year 2002, on 27th March, when the late king of Dagbon, Na Yakubu Andani, a good friend of mine, was killed, I happened to be the attorney general in the government of President Kufuor. That terrible event shook the entire country with grief, horror, and deep regret. May his soul rest in perfect peace and receive the blessings of the Almighty. The establishment of the Waku Commission, the prosecution of suspects, their acquittal by the courts, and the continuing agony we've had to endure for 16 years represent a painful period for all of us. Fortunately, the crisis has persisted. Upon becoming President of the Republic on 7th January 2017, I was determined to help find, bring finality to the matter and in the process, witness the enskinment of a substantive yana for the people of Dabon. I did indicate in October 2017 that I wanted to celebrate the Damba festival with the people of Dabon, with a new yana sitting in state before the end of 2017. Alas, that was not to be. Nonetheless, I'm fully expecting that soon I shall be celebrating Damba with the people of Damba in the presence of a substantive Yana. <laughs> Damba is one of the most ancient traditional states of our history. It is generally recorded by historians to have been founded in the 14th century. The Asante Kingdom was established in the latter part of the 17th century the ascension of the great Opium Suo Usoiti II onto the Golden Stool, when Za Zangi, Na Zagina, the 18th king of Dabon, was reigning. The people of Dabon ought justifiably to be proud of this heritage and guard it jealously. An important contribution to this is to consolidate the culture of enskinning Yanas without hitch, confusion, or bloodshed. I'm a descendant of a royal household. I know tradition and I value tradition. I can't say, 
Wait. If you know and value custom, you don't destroy. The forebears and the forebears of the political tradition to which I belong were several decades ago before independence, clear in their conviction that the chieftain institution was and should be a pivotal part of our development agenda. I was given the mandate as president to fix a broken country, both its economy and its society. I'm determined in my efforts to do just that. That notwithstanding, the Dagbon people must themselves also be willing to give peace a chance. And it is attainable in my view if there is a will and a readiness to compromise. Not many Ghanaians know that Abudu and Andani are not clans. They are names of brothers of the same father and are now used as terms to define the two main gates that are sent to the Dagbon skill. For an ethnic group with no clan cleavages believe that they have the best opportunity to mend fences, restore the dignity of their kingdom, and ensure the forward march of Dagbon. In so doing, they must learn to accommodate one another. I would appeal from the bottom of my heart to the Kampakuya Na and the Bolin Lana, the sons and regents of Na Yakub Wandani and Na Muhammadu Abdullah, respectively, young men with bright, promising futures before them, to rise above the passions that have fueled the disputes that have marred Dagmar, and as an expression of their love for their people, help in the effective implementation of this roadmap to bring lasting peace to Jabon. To Dagbon and laid the basis for its rapid development. The overwhelming majority of the people of Dagbon, especially the youth, are tired of this age-old conflict and just want the opportunity to enhance their lives in normalcy and security. Government will give the requisite financial, material, moral, physical, and security forces necessary for the sustenance of the peace process that has been embarked on today. Even though government has already spent a huge amount of money and resources in maintaining peace in Yendi these last 16 years, government will not relent in its determination to help foster again peace and unity in Gabon. As I have said on many occasions, I am not a Dagomba. And I therefore cannot be an Andani or a Budu. I have no candidate for the office of Yana. That is a matter for the people of Dagbon. I am just an ordinary Ghanaian who wants to see the peace, progress, and prosperity of all parts of our beautiful country without any discrimination or differentiation. Eminent chiefs, representatives of the Royal Andani and Abudu Gates, chairpersons and members of the Council of State, chief of staff and officials of the presidency, ministers and deputy ministers of state, first deputy speaker of parliament, deputy majority, majority leader and deputy minority chief whip, service chiefs, MMDCs from the northern region, revered clergy ladies and gentlemen, when Nana Zangina embraced Islam, the religion of Dagbon, he did so because he believed that it was the path to peace and development. Let us vindicate his vision by abiding to this Roomba and ensuring that we, in the shortest possible time, have a yard now for Dagbon who can spearhead this development. The time has come for Dagbon to be restored to its former glory and greatness. Salam alaikum. Umpu here. Niyi toma pam. Now on ni song. May God bless the eminent chiefs, the members of the Royal Andani and Abudu Gates, and all of us. May God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much, Mr. President. Shortly, we'll take the closing prayer, and then we'll retire for lunch. But before then, history has been made today, and it's important we capture it as such. We have a number of photographs that we would like to take. And, Mr. President, I would request of you to first join the eminent chiefs right in front of their seats for the first photo, second, the first team to the right, and then the second team here, and then one big joint photo. The size of the room would require it as such. So may I kindly request of you to please join us. And may I ask the eminent chiefs please to rise to receive the president for the photo. The president will join the Andani family for a photo next. The president is next taking a photo with the Andani family. There's a group photo with the Andani family. After this photo, the president will take another with the Abudu family. Thank you very much, Mr. President. He will now take a photo with the Abudu royal family. And then when we are done, we will have one joint photo, the president, eminent chiefs, the Andani and Abudu families. The president and the Abudu family. And then finally, we will take one joint photo, the president, the eminent chiefs, and both families. The president, eminent chiefs, and both families. And so the eminent chiefs will join the president right in the middle, and both families. May I ask all photographers and camera men to step back. Please come this way. Photographers and camera men, please come this way so that we can get a wider shot from here. The president will join the eminent chiefs and both families We'll join the president and eminent chiefs. Both families will join the president and eminent chiefs for the next photo.
Can we spread out, please, and get a wider shot? A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for history being made here this afternoon. Mr. President, we are grateful. The President will resume his seat. The eminent chiefs will resume their seats. The leaders of both families will also resume their seats.